Good morning, Fairfield Christian and the Thomas Christian. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Fairfield, I'm sorry I was not there at the end of last week. I was actually visiting this place, GCU, also known as Grand Canyon University. Uh, they invited me down there to tour the campus, meet with the university president, meet the department heads. Uh, got to go to a basketball game. Uh, GCU destroyed Seattle University. That was a lot of fun. Uh, but it was overall a really great time. But I was down there for more than just hanging out on a college campus. Uh, have some great meetings. Uh, now I've got some great news for many of you students uh, in Fairfield. Some great news about uh, some future things that we're going to hook up with with uh, Grand Canyon University. And I'll be telling you guys a little bit more about that over the next few weeks. But this week, don't worry, I'll be there all this week. In addition, uh, we've got a scripture verse to memorize this week. So, this week we are in the book of 2 Peter. Again, I apologize, there is another typo on your uh, list there. It is not 1 Peter, it is actually 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the book of 2 Peter. First of all, as the name implies, it was probably written by Peter. I say that because many scholars believe that it may not have been written by Peter. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, but... Uh, there is a lot of reasons why it probably was written by Peter. So we're going to take it as Peter did write this book. Uh, if he did write it, then he was probably written from Rome, and he was probably written not long before he was executed by Nero. So there are a lot of themes in this, including uh, the theme that there are a lot of false teachers out there teaching Christians bad things. And the reason this book is important is because there are still a lot of people out there teaching Christians bad things. So we need to be on guard about that. We need to be on guard about the corruption in the world that might be corrupting Christianity. And so as we, I want you to re, uh, remember that as we get into our verse. Uh, let's go through our verse right now. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5-7. through 7, This is what it says. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with patient endurance, and patient endurance with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love for everyone. There is a lot going on in that verse. So I'm just going to break down this verse a little bit into smaller chunks, so maybe we can understand it a little bit better. First of all, right in the beginning it says, in view of all this. Well, in view of what? Well, to understand that, we have to go back a couple of verses, and we have to see that Peter starts talking about God has given us everything to live a happy, godly life. However, the world has corrupted that. The world is full of corruption, and it's full, and that, that corruption leads to our evil desires. And because of those evil desires, we have to do certain things. In light of those evil desires, in light of that corruption, there are certain things we need to do in view of all that. And what we need to do is we need to make every effort. That means we need to try as hard as we can to respond to God's promises. And what are God's promises? Well, to find those out, we got to read the Bible. That's why we have the Bible, because they're filled with God's promises for the church, for the body of Christ, for us individually. There are tons of promises in there. So we've got to read God's word, and we've got to understand what those promises are so that we can respond to them. So we make every effort, try as hard as we can to respond to them. Peter then continues, we need to supplement our faith. Well, what does that mean? Well, our faith, right, is what we believe in. In fact, it's believing in what we cannot physically see. We cannot physically see Jesus, but we still believe in him. We have faith in him. But faith alone is not enough. There are several other things we need to supplement or add to our faith. Here's our faith. We're going to supplement it by adding certain things in. And Peter talks about those things throughout the rest of the verse. We need to supplement or add to our faith with a generous provision. That means we need to not hold back. We need to do the best we can. We need to try our best to add these things into our faith. And then there's the whole list there, right? Moral excellence. That's knowing between right and wrong. And always, with excellence, choosing the right path to take. We can't, we're trying not to slip up or make, make mistakes along the way. Knowledge, we have to infuse ourselves with knowledge. That's why we're in school, right? To learn, to gain knowledge. We have to gain knowledge. But with that knowledge, we have to have self-control. It's not okay to learn about some things. There are some things we shouldn't know about. Because God says that's just evil, corrupt nonsense. And you guys don't even need to worry about learning that. And see, that's why we have teachers in the classroom. Teachers are there to guide us into what we should learn, what we shouldn't learn, and to help keep you on the path of moral excellence and in knowledge and in self-control. Along with that self-control, we need to have 
patient endurance. That means things aren't going to always happen when we want them to happen. We must be patient and sometimes for a long time. Patient endurance. We can't complain about it. You know, we can go to God and say, God, why is this going on? But God wants to have patient endurance. Jesus isn't, didn't come back today. He may not come back in the next five minutes, may not come back in the next five years. We hope that he will, but it may be a while. The Christians in, the, in Peter's day, when he was writing this, they were hoping that Jesus was going to be back like pretty soon. Obviously, it's been about 2,000 years, and Jesus still has not returned. So, we need to make sure that we have patient endurance in what we do. And from that, we need to be more and more like God. Godliness. We need to be, we, none of us are perfect, none of us can be like God, but we can be striving, we can try as hard as we can to be like God. Specifically, the model that God gave us is Jesus Christ, right? We want to be as much like Jesus Christ as we can be. And then we need to have brotherly affection. So those that we know, like those, those people in the school, people, your friends at school, those are your brothers and sisters. We should have brotherly affection for them, brotherly love for those people. And then to extend beyond that, we need to have love for everyone, whether we know them or not. We need to have love for all those people. So ultimately what it comes down to is God has provided everything that we need, though the world has corrupted it. So because of that corruption, there are certain things we need to do. And this verse lists those things that we need to do in order to avoid the earthly and worldly corruption that is going to plague us throughout our lives. We don't want that to steer us away from Jesus Christ. And that's what these false teachers in Peter's day were trying to do. They were trying to teach people incorrectly, using the world and its desires, to pull people away from Christianity and away from the truth of Jesus Christ into something else. And as Christians, we need to make sure we do all the things in this verse so that we are not steered in a direction like some of these early Christians were. Okay, we'll talk about this more throughout the week, hopefully in your devotions in your classrooms. Uh, and we'll talk about it more in chapel on Friday as well. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Uh, hang in there. We've only got three months of school left, right? By the end of this week, we'll be in March. And then March, April, May, and we're done. So just three months left. Hang in there. Have patient endurance throughout the rest of the school year. Hope to see you guys real soon. God bless.